Don't try this at home. So this is my gear reveal, my top 10. 10 items that I think that I need, not want. Obviously I want them, but I think I need them in order to uh, have health and safety and security and peace of mind. Not everybody's gonna have the same top 10 list. And that's the fun and interesting aspect of living in a vehicle and calling it home. Please leave your comments on my YouTube channel and let us know what you think your top three, top five or top 10 items are. One of my Ronin on Trail YouTube subscribers graciously donated an entire window set of WeatherTech solar panel privacy curtains. They want to remain anonymous and I respect that and I just want to give a shout out to you and say thank you. You didn't have to do that but I guess you saw my YouTube video of my cardboard cutout privacy curtains and I guess you weren't impressed. So thank you for my anonymous everyday hero and Ronin on Trail. It took me a long time to choose which lithium battery I would use for my power source. Forcey Force chose the Linux lithium battery. Chrome has the CanBat battery. There's a gentleman by the name I think is Will Prouse. Will has a DIY solar panel off-grid channel that's phenomenal. Very intelligent young man and brings a fear of God into the engineers who develop solar panels and inverters and batteries. And Will suggested the sock batteries but they're sold out so I just want to keep it simple for stupid people like me and that's okay because I ended up going with Chrome's choice the CanBat batteries I like supporting the American made products and the Canadian made products the one aspect that was the selling point was CanBat has a thermal system or a cold weather lithium battery most batteries that I researched they have a shutoff in cold weather which means you can still use that battery but you cannot charge for from, it. from what I understand, there's a thermostat within the lithium battery. When the temperature drops, that thermal system kicks in and keeps it warm. But that was my choice. I chose over Battleborn, over the SOC battery, over um, Linux lithium batteries. I chose the CanBat battery, the Canadian built lithium cold weather battery. And if you go to the CanBat website and you type in Van City Van Life, you'll get a 5% discount. Thanks and shout out to Chrome for being a, um, a pay for kind of guy. I also looked at solar panel portable inverters. I looked at Goal Zero. I looked at Jackery. And I also looked at other brands. I ended up going with a newer technology battery and it's called EcoFlow. There's the EcoFlow River and the EcoFlow Max. What a lot of van lifers do is they sit at a picnic table or they sit in the park and they can edit their videos or they can run power for their phone or if they want to play music they can do that as well. And I also got the EcoFlow solar panel. The selling point for the EcoFlow was the charge time. I can't remember the exact charging time for Goal Zero and Jackery. EcoFlow Max blows away the competition in regards to how quickly they can recharge their battery from other solar panel or from a wall outlet. You can charge your EcoFlow in about an hour and 30 minutes to charge my battery to 100%. I was really impressed with that. I'll try to put all the links to all the things that I purchased, my top 10 items, or I'll just write down all the items that I bought if I can't figure out the technology. I was born in the 20th century. Because I only have about 25 or 30 square feet of living space for my Toyota 4Runner is I needed as much storage capacity as possible. I was initially looking at a cargo rack, but it didn't make a lot of sense for that because I would be doing a combination of rural and urban and overlanding. So a cargo box made a lot of sense. I initially looked at Thule cargo boxes. They have an excellent reputation. They're the top of the line. I looked at other different brands as well, and I ended up going with a, a brand that probably a lot of people don't hear about. And I, I forget the name of it, actually. Hold on, it's already on the roof. I have to check the name of it, just one second. 
It's called the Go Plus. The only reason I, I stumbled across it was I sometimes suffer from insomnia and I spend countless hours just researching things. And I started reading their view comments and a lot of people either were Thule advocates or had Thule cargo boxes prior. And they ended up going with the Go Plus cargo box because it was a lot cheaper and it offered similar added values. So I ended up going with a 14 cubic foot cargo box. There are other ones that are bigger and longer. Uh, I'll put the dimensions down if I remember the size of the cargo box. I'm going to be storing most of my things in canvas bags. Canvas bags conform to confined space better. I'm going to purchase some cedar chips or cedar balls, whatever you call them. Uh, it's a natural scent. Is that aromatherapy called? It makes everything smell nice and it's also uh, antibacterial and anti-bug. So it, it wards off, I think, moths and termites and dinosaurs and dragons and things like that. I didn't want something overwhelmingly big. I didn't want an aircraft carrier on the top of my roof. I wanted something that handled my hiking gear, my recovery gear, some personal items, maybe some dry goods, and a camping chair. And that's about it. And before I put the cargo box on, I actually needed the car rack bars. So yeah, I went with the Toyota OEM roof rack crossbars. There's hardly any wind noise. I had my sunroof open and I didn't really hear anything. Mind you, I'm tone deaf. <laughs> so uh, from all the sirens when I was a paramedic and when I used to DJ. The one thing I liked about the Toyota OEM crossbars for my roof rack was it didn't overhang and it didn't give a a gaudy type look to it. it. It wasn't bulky. It was streamlined and it was aerodynamic and I like that. I also made sure that whatever cargo box I bought, the clamping system, the secure systems would be compatible with my roof rack bars. That's one thing that's really important. Whatever roof rack cargo box you're going to purchase, make sure that cargo box is compatible with your roof rack crossbars. Some of the accessories I got were really cool. I got a door step. You can clip it on your door mount system. There's a, um, a molding frame that actually you just press up against uh, a running board or corners or uh, articulations that are difficult to measure and it conforms to that space. So that's going to help in my van build. I have so much crap in my truck right now. I'm organizing stuff, but this thing slides in between your console and your seat and you can store little things. This adjunct, adjunct, is that the word? I don't know. This is simply a organizer and you open up your console and instead of it being a big mess, items that I use all the time. I, I keep on the top and then everything else is in the bottom. Oh, baby. So this is the mounting clip openings for the floor mat to the SUV floor. All you need to do is make sure that the toggles are parallel to the openings of the floor mat, line them up and push them in. And this is the Husky floor mat. They guarantee the, the quality of this mat for life. The one nice thing about Amazon for vehicles is you type in your vehicle and it'll tell you whether it's compatible or not. I got the Iceco fridge. The one thing that sold me on the Iceco was it had a Danfoss compressor. It's highly recommended, has a really good warranty on it. And a lot of the van life SUV overlanders recommend a Danfoss compressor. That's what I ended up going with. And I went with Iceco because they had really good reviews. I think it's a 21 quart, uh, 20 liter fridge refrigerator. When you pull the divider out, the entire fridge becomes a freezer. When you put the divider in, one side is a freezer and then the other side is a fridge, which I think is really cool. My first Ronin on Trail everyday hero, Mark, uh, from The Hammer in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. He gave me a great gift. And just quickly, Mark's story, he's a truck driver. He works a lot of hours on the road. And when he saw one of my videos and my story about being a former paramedic living with PTSD, so he donated a, an extra diesel heater that he had. That's the type of noble guy Mark is. And that's the diesel heater that I'll be putting in my vehicle to make sure that I can live in this vehicle in four seasons. He's a very shy and humble kind of guy. I've convinced Mark we'd sit down and shoot the shit. I'm looking forward to that. So thank you, Mark.
Ontario gets very muggy and sometimes you can have 100% humidity and it's like sitting in a sauna. Well, when you're in a confined space and you're up north, if you have your windows down with, without any type of mosquito mesh netting, the mosquitoes and black flies and horse flies are about the size of a Buick and you're gonna, you're gonna suffer from it. I was gonna make my own do-it-yourself mosquito netting, but I came across two unique products. One was simply oversized pantyhose socks and you just stretch it over your window. By the time you open the package and put it on your window, it's less than one minute. The three things I like about the simplicity of one of the mosquito mesh nets is it protects you against bugs, it's UV protective, or at least they say it's UV protective. It allows for cross ventilation and privacy. Oh, that's four things, isn't it? Yeah, privacy. I don't do good in math. <laughs> Or, or English. Anyhow, yeah, so the other product I purchased, it looks like a mini tent on your side door. You can put it on your driver's side or passenger side. It has even a little roof and a, a storm flap and you can zip it up or zip it down and it keeps the rain out. And all the reviews I've read about it so far, the people that do overlanding and van life and car life, they love it. It's recommended when you buy these mosquito mesh uh, privacy curtains, you buy two. One for the driver's side and one for the passenger side, so it gives you cross breeze. Also to address the muggy summer weather in Ontario, I bought two different fans. One is, I, I think, called Carframo. It's a marine grade fan. And what that simply means is if you live in salt water, or that, that would be a fish, right? Nah. If you have a boat or you travel in weather that's very humid and wet, this Carframo fan will endure the mugginess, the, the wet weather, the salt water. It was expensive, but that will be my primary fan. I bought a USB uh, chargeable fan that is uh, desktop and you can clamp it. So I'm going to use one fan to push air out of the vehicle and one to simply use as cooling. I receive injections every two weeks to control my asthma. Ventilation is really important in this vehicle. Oh, another thing I got for, for cleaning was a HEPA-powered portable vacuum. It's really important that I remove as best I can dust mites, allergies, and pollen from my vehicle. I spray vinegar on my sleeping bag to kill the dust mites, and I leave it out on the hood because sunlight also kills dust mites as well. I've learned to really laugh at myself and find myself to be quite funny at times. Not funny like Robin Williams funny, God bless his soul, but funny in the sense that um, my go-to emotion when I was first diagnosed with PTSD was extreme anger and rage. Or if, if I was really sick, I would shut down and I would just be invisible. I would turn in on myself and not say anything and be very, very quiet and still. And it's taken me almost 10 years to, to really smile and really laugh. And that's the one promise I try to treat myself every day is to laugh out loud and really, really laugh. I just think of all the stupid things I've done in my life and now I can laugh about it. 